All right, so Saturday night, Max Holloway went out there and put on one of the very best performances that we've ever seen in the UFC and knocked out Justin Gagey, the human highlight reel, with one second left. If we saw this in a movie, we would say, come on, man, that's too far-fetched. That's ridiculous. Oh, he knocked him out with one second left. Well, that's what happened. Tonight, totally embodied what that belt was built for. And there should be a picture of that fight in the f***ing dictionary when you look up BMF. I just quickly want to talk about that fight, some of the mistakes that Justin Gage made, and then we're going to talk about what's next for Max Holloway because the reality is he has got options galore, and rightly so. Oh, and by the way, on top of the healthy fight purse that he would have received, he also got another $600,000 in post-fight bonuses. Holloway wins $600,000. Well-deserved. So well done to Max Holloway. This man deserves all of this success. An incredible fighter, a BMF, and one of the nicest, most classiest, humble guys you could ever meet. And the man doesn't talk shit. Ilya Tapori was talking a little bit of shit. He was nothing but class, respect, martial arts, cold, whatever you want to call it. Max Holloway is the man. So, against Justin Gagey, of course, you know, the narrative was, what is he doing? This is too dangerous of a fight. Justin Gagey is a killer. He's a knockout artist. He just knocked out Dustin Poirier. Poirier beat Max Holloway twice. He lost to Alexander Volkanovsky three times. He's making a big mistake going in there with Justin Gagey. The legendary chin of Max Holloway will be tested and will be destroyed. Well, that is not what we saw, okay? It's not what we saw at all. Remember I said a while ago that Justin Gagey is not going to be next for Islam Makachev and it's probably going to be Dustin Poirier. Because if somebody goes out there and gets a big victory, sets the arena on fire the way that Dustin did, that can put you at the front of the line. Well, it definitely ain't Justin Gagey and it definitely is Dustin Poirier. Uh, Gagey came at me and said I was talking bollocks. I was like, mate, listen, you're fighting a featherweight. And it was not a dig. I have nothing but respect for Justin Gagey as well. It was just the facts of the matter was you are booked in a fight against a featherweight that I thought more than likely Holloway was going to win this fight, okay? And that's what we saw happen. So coming off a loss, and then certainly when you get it knocked out like that, you ain't fighting for the lightweight championship. Anyway, we're not here to talk about that. We're talking about Max Holloway. Now, he was fantastic because, number one, going up a weight class, he looked big. He looked huge. He looked just as big as Justin Gagey. He was fast. He was evasive. There was beautiful footwork. The ring generalship, the, the master class that he put on, controlling the geography of the octagon and not loading up on shots. Staying nice and loose, nice and calm, jabbing to the body, coming upstairs, right? as opposed to trying to knock out his opponent with every single shot. That's what Justin Gagey was doing. He was loading up with vicious right hooks all the time. And when you load up, you telegraph the shot. And when you swing and you miss, you're then off balance, okay? Max Holloway was poised. He was the opposite. He was poised. He didn't check the leg kicks, which is crazy that he wasn't limping because Justin Gagey tore up that lead leg. And I thought it would have minimized the movement of Max Holloway, but it didn't. So he was the better guy. He was the smarter man. He had a higher fight IQ. He was more relaxed. He was composed. And he wasn't obsessed with looking for the knockout. Boxing coaches or fight coaches always tell you, don't look for the knockout. The knockout will find itself, okay? When you look for the knockout, generally, you don't find it. And then after dominating pretty much the entire fight, almost finishing him with a spinning back fist, ripping to the body in round five, almost finishing him there, just shocking the world with an absolutely sensational performance. He gets the stoppage. He gets the knockout. He sets the world on fire. He does what would look like bullshit if it was to happen in a movie. That's like movie shit. It's, it's the fight of the year. Points at the canvas. We've seen him do that a million times with 10 seconds left and he was dying for that 10 seconds. He said his corner was shouting out, 60. 50, 40, he was just waiting for 10. So he could point at the grant and just let go and have some fun, okay? And as I said, it's insane to do that because he was winning the fight. He was winning that fight, so that is a really dangerous approach. He could have got knocked out because he wanted that moment. He wanted that adrenaline rush. That is what makes Max Holloway a bad motherfucker. And of course, he's the BMF champion. Justin Gage, he gets flatlined, face plant knockout, face down on the canvas. He was there for quite some time unbelievable stuff. So, not only did he win the fight, not only is he the BMF, not only did he go away 
$600,000 extra that he wasn't expecting in his bank account, but now he has a ton of opportunities. Okay, so let's go through them. First of all, he just beat Justin Gage, who was the rightful number one contender in the lightweight division. Islam Makachev is a potential down the line. But Islam Makachev just got booked against Dustin Poirier. Going to talk about that in another video. So that's not available to him right now. And neither is Dustin Poirier. At 145, Ilya Zaporia is the champ that just knocked out Volkanovski. The man's undefeated. He's got legions of fans in Spain and Georgia and all over the world, let's be honest. Ilya Zaporia has arrived as one of the biggest, newest faces and stars in mixed martial arts, and the man is going to be a global sensation. He already is, what am I talking about? So he was asked, Ilya was asked about Max Holloway or who he wants to fight next, and he said in an interview that I will translate for you. He said, it's clear for me my next fight is Max Holloway. Congratulations and enjoy tonight, but after fighting me, he will have to go to the back of the line. First of all, let's just remember that it seemed like the championship days for Max Holloway were long gone. Couldn't beat Alexander Volkanovsky, and there's no shame in that. He had three attempts. First two were close. Third one, Volkanovsky did. Bit of a number on him. I had the number. I had the rhythm. Had an answer for all the weapons of Max Holloway. But this sport's all about what have you done for me lately? And as we know, Max Holloway just... The man's a goddamn fucking legend what he did on Saturday night. Unbelievable. So now, the conversations... Everybody wants to see Max Holloway versus Ilya Taporia. Granted, Alexander Volkanovsky's out there. There's already talk of a rematch of Volk and Taporia doing it in Spain or wherever. Dana White wants to go to Spain, but obviously there's complications in securing a big arena like the Bernabeu. So whether or not that happens in Spain, is that the fight to make with Taporia and Volkanovsky? Right now, the appetite for Taporia versus Max Holloway is probably bigger than Volkanovsky. That was an emphatic shutdown in that fight. Volkanovski got knocked out in the second round. Okay, it was a dominant victory. Granted, though, he defended the belt so many times, he kind of deserves a shot. But, just like I said, that Dustin Poirier is going to skip the line ahead of Justin Gagey because of the way he knocked out Benoit Saint-Denis and also the brutal nature of the fight. And then to come from behind after almost being finished on multiple occasions and to get his own emphatic knockout... That jumps the line. You skip the queue. The fans want to see it. The world wants to see it. The UFC want to put on the fights that people want to see. So Dustin Poirier did skip the line. Dustin Poirier is fighting for the belt. And Max Holloway might just do the exact same thing to Alexander Volkanovsky. Listen, we're all fans of Volkanovsky. He's one of the best fighters we've ever had in the UFC. He's one of the nicest guys and he'll never change. And I've got so much respect. But... As a fan, right now, I would rather see Max Holloway versus Ilya Taporia. And maybe Volkanovski can fight the winner, which is insane because that will be four fights between Max and Volkanovski. Now, when Max Holloway knocked out Justin Gagey, it showed all the fighters. It showed Tam Aspinall and a few others. And it showed Ilya Taporia looking bored. Looking bored out of his mind, indifferent, blank expression, whatever you want to call it. So Max Holloway was asked about that. And again, this is why you got to respect Max Holloway. Could have talked shit. He could have said, yeah, you know what? I'm not surprised he did that. I wouldn't want to fight me either. Look at what I just did to just engage you. But he said... By any chance, did you see uh, Ilya's reaction to your knockout? Yeah, I saw it. People saw it. But I, I don't know. Like, you know, like everybody's like, oh, he, he's like whatever. But you can't... I don't know the dude. You know what I mean? You don't know if he's socially awkward or something. So like maybe that's just what what he is. You know, no, 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 no. Fair play to him. You know, I don't know how animated or whatever he is. So... I ain't gonna take to it. This guy is a world champion. He's a killer. But like I said, all fight week, brother. It's quite, you know, we got questions. There's a lot of questions about the guy and uh, I, I would wanna, I wanna figure that out. So, listen, as I've said, sign me up. Max Holloway, Ilya Taporia. The man has options though. There is a potential for Islam Makachev down the line. There's a potential against Taporia. There's a potential against Conor McGregor. McGregor's coming back. We'll talk about that in another video as well. McGregor's coming back. Okay, he's fighting Michael Chandler. Don't tell me that McGregor doesn't want to rematch against Max Holloway because that would be a sick fight for the BMF title. Max Holloway is going to want to go up against Conor McGregor. Red Pan tonight is the BMF champ. He gets a cut in the pay-per-view and he gets a chance to avenge a loss. So right now, with one fight, with one roll of the dice for Max Holloway, in a move where everybody thought that he was crazy and he was making a huge mistake. People are telling me what I was doing. Justin's going to be too big, too strong. 
Just a lot of stuff, you know. People need to get reminded, and I'd, I'd let them know. He has made a shit ton of money and opened and presented himself with so many opportunities. Featherweight title shot against Aporia. BMF Championship against Conor McGregor and a red panty night and a potential title fight at 155 pounds. It just goes to show. In life, you got to take some risk because when you take a risk, you get all these opportunities. Playing it safe, listen, playing it safe can work out sometimes, but taking a risk, it's exciting. And look at the shit that Max Holloway has now. You shouldn't even give up. Like, what is that? Like that, if you give up, you, you certify a loser. If you try... You, you at least win in your book. My mom and my dad, there's, I knew there was heavy drug users and then my dad would always beat up my mom. I think so that, that her drugs was like her, her medicine, like would, would calm her stress. The last time I saw my dad was when I was like 10, 11 years old and then I never see him after that. I, I should pray for him, but like he has no use in my life anymore. Max Holloway, you're an absolute legend. Take your bow and you guys subscribe and ring the bell.